going to pray, uh, if that's okay, real quick. God, I just want to thank you this morning that you are in this place, God. That no matter how we feel, how the week has been, you are in this place. The power of heaven is in this room, God. So I pray, God, we just connect with you and your heart when we come right now in a sense of worship and reverence and praise for who you are and what you do in our lives. Search the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures the fame are never enough. And you came along and put me back together. Now satisfied hearing your love. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Yes, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid. Show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, you still call me friend, God of the mountain. to welcome each and every one of you to our worship service and also those uh, people who are watching online at home. We uh, welcome you here too. And we'll begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, your Son willingly endured the evil of sin and death at the cross for our redemption. Grant to us the goodness of our Savior so that we are not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. 
through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. In our Old Testament lesson here, we find from Jeremiah that the Lord gives his present, his precious saving words, which gives us hope in this time, as well as the time when uh, Jeremiah was uh, living with the people of Israel. O oh Lord, you know, remember and visit me and take me and take vengeance for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, take me away and not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found, and I ate them. And the words became to me a joy and a delight of my heart, for I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of, of revelers, nor did I rejoice, I sat alone, because your hand was upon me, for you has filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing? My deceitful brook, like the waters that fail. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and know and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you, this people, a fortified wall bronze. They will fight against you, and they shall not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hands of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. For our epistle lesson for today, Paul gives us some interesting words and comforting words as, we, uh, as he talks about genuine love, which will overcome evil with good. And there's something I think that we can uh, think about as we see all the unrest in our country today. These words uh, really should mean a lot to, to everyone. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and, and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, Never avenge yourselves, for leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. To the contrary, if, you're hung, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap coals, a burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for the gospel lesson for today. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. And uh, this will serve as the reading for our sermon text for today. And uh, in this uh, portion of scripture, Jesus calls his disciples to take up their cross and follow him. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, that this should never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. 
Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, we're uh, all the time, I think, uh, we long to take a vacation. And and I don't know about you, in this uh, time of uh, our situation, I like to just pack up and leave somewhere. But uh, sometimes it's not possible to do that because of what's going on. But I want you to think back. For many travelers, you know, if we go southward to our neighbor, Mexico, um, one of the most uh, unpleasant surprises is purchasing an item with U.S. currency expecting equal exchange, dollar for dollar. However, when you travel, you'll find that uh, it's altogether different what is worth one dollar in reality in the Mexican peso is worth today only 22.07 cents to our dollar. So you must be careful to check with the going rate of exchange or you're gonna find yourself on the losing end of that deal. Now do you ever think about uh, being cheated if you're cheated in your faith? Perhaps you know you are, are baptized and taught the faith and you join a church and You immerse yourself in the activity of the church only to wake up some morning and feel very disappointed, discouraged, or used, or sometimes bitter. That doesn't happen in ascension, does it? Do you sometimes wonder, life in the church is not what I hoped? Or is is it really what it's like to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Now, in our text for today, Jesus had to address that similar problem with his 12 disciples. And here along for those three years, they witnessed his miracles. They saw the crowds getting larger and larger, and they just heard a sterling confession when Jesus asked the question of his disciples, who do you say that I am? Here Peter pipes up and says, Jesus, you're the the son of the living God. And after that, they were expecting, of course, grandeur and things to come. But then Jesus suddenly drops a bombshell. He says in our text, it is necessary for me to go to Jerusalem to suffer and to be killed. Rejection and denial set in because, you know, they had not counted the cost of discipleship. And this is why uh, we're here this morning, because uh, we want to consider that cost of discipleship. What does it really mean for us? What does it really mean to be a follower of Jesus? And is, is it worth the price exchange to deny ourselves, to pick up that cross and to follow him? First of all, there's three things I want, to, I want to talk about this morning. First of all, we have to let us count the cost. What's it cost to be a disciple? And you know, Jesus was very open about what was in store for, uh, uh, for them, and for him, I should say. He openly acknowledged that cost of God's salvation plan, it was necessary that he go to back to Jerusalem and to suffer and to die. He knew full well why he had come, why the Father had sent him. It was a mission of love. He had to die in order that he might save us from the punishment of our disobedience. And he had come so that 
to keep that law for us. Way back when, you know, that law said be perfect. Well, Adam and Eve, they blew it when they disobeyed God. And of course, they could not keep that law perfectly. And so, and so he had to pay for our sins by taking his, by taking his life to the cross. And you know, Jesus never deceives. He openly teaches his disciples that association with him involved accepting the mark of the cross. On a number of occasions, Jesus was very clear on what was going to happen to them in that distant future because of their relationship with him. He openly tells them where they were heading. There was a man who habitually liked to sleep long as he could before waking, but that one day he awoke even later than usual. And looking at his clock, he bolted out of bed and he dashed and put cold water on his, on his face and he quickly put a razor to it and then he gave his hair a hasty pass with his comb. He gulped down a, a glass of milk and grabbed his briefcase. And then on the way out, he gave his wife a Dagwood kiss. Now, you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever seen the Dagwood comic? Okay, some of you maybe. But that was, uh, that was labeled. He, he kissed his wife as he ran out the door to catch that bus. But he barely was able to to jump aboard as it began to pull away. And dropping a coin in the meter, he lurched down the aisle towards the seat, and, and, and suddenly, and suddenly he looked around breathlessly, and he blurted out, by the way, where's this bus going? You see, we have received that mark of the cross at our baptism. And in our baptism, we deny ourselves and we take, out our, take up our cross and we follow him. That means the activities must continue throughout our lifetime of faith journey of following Jesus. And daily we remember our baptism. And his cross brings shame and rejection from the world. And St. Paul gives us a pretty clear picture of what, the of what the world thinks of our faith journey and the cross. In fact, St. Paul tells us, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You see, the world thinks salvation and all it entails is a bunch of nonsense. In fact, the ways of the world runs counter to the ways that God wants you and I and his Christian people to go. And when God tells us to deny self while the world says, hey, get all you can while you can, the world sees that cross as a, 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 as a, as a sign of God's weakness rather than a sign of God's hope. When we travel along that journey of life and that faith, that road of faith, it gets rough. And there are those people who travel along that create roadblocks in our path. It's not easy traveling the road that God has set for us. And he tells us from the very beginning what to expect. Secondly, in spite of all, that, of all that, we need to accept the cost. You see, the scandal, the stumbling block that makes it hard for us to accept God's way of, of rescuing us is accepting God's way of salvation means to reject our own way. Our own self is that major roadblock because by nature, because of our sinfulness, our ways run counter to God's ways. It's like traveling against the stream. One of the wonderful vacations I think back when we had our kids was going to Zion National Park. Maybe you've been there. And we were interested in going back 
and doing some hiking where the canyons begin. Because if you go back far enough, they're going to get so narrow you can barely go through them. Well, in order to do that, we had to get into the stream and walk up the upstream. And it was really hard going against the stream, fighting the current while watching for deep pools or sharp rocks. And how easy it was when we went downstream, it took less time when we got back very quickly. And you know, our faith is like that. Having faith in Jesus Christ is like traveling upstream going against the stream with what the majority of the world is doing. But traveling and doing it God's way brings the lasting benefits to you and me and the Christian. And how often don't we want to do it our way, the way of our natural flesh, than doing it God's way? And even though we have taken up that cross to do it, you know, there was a, a man from eastern Kentucky, uh, a coal miner, once came to a pastor and stated, you know, I'd give anything to believe that God would forgive my sins, but I cannot believe that he will forgive me if I just ask him. It's too cheap. And the, and the pastor said, uh, friend, did you work in the mine today? And he says, yes, I was down there. How did you get down in the mine, and how did you get back up? Did you pay? And the man said, of course not. I just got into the cage and, and was pulled down, I was taken down and was pulled back up. Well, were you afraid to entrust yourself to that cage? Was it too cheap? And the guy said, oh no. It was cheap for me, but it cost the company a lot of money. And suddenly that truth struck him. What had not cost him anything, salvation, had not come cheaply to God. It cost God plenty to, in order to redeem us. It cost God's very life in order to save us from damnation. And God counted the, uh, the cost, and so did Jesus. And Peter did not understand the cost of salvation. Peter took Jesus aside to avoid embarrassment, but whose? Peter, in his haste, did not understand, nor did he take the time to weigh the cost. He said, never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Peter, in his haste, had forgotten what Jesus' mission was all about. In his pious talk, he was becoming an instrument of Satan, trying to detour Jesus' journey of love to the cross. Paul, uh, Peter forgot what was, in, what was indeed at stake here. He forgot that his salvation and the world's salvation are in jeopardy or was in jeopardy. And when we count that cost, not by how much we pay, but by recounting how Christ purchased us, as Peter himself in his writings later said, he said, for you know that it is, was not with perishable things such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers. But with the holy, precious blood, a lamb without blemish and without defect. In imitation of our Lord, we accept the cost of discipleship because of what lies ahead. We can look forward knowing that our salvation is at the end of our journey of faith. Thirdly, we live out that cost. We realize that there's a vast difference between the cost of the life of discipleship in Jesus and the, law, and the cost of the life of separation from Jesus. Attempting to reserve part of this world's existence for ourselves 
while also trying to live in Christ risks forfeiture for eternity. And Jesus openly poses a very important question for us all as we ponder the, the cost of discipleship. He said, what good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world but at the same time forfeit his soul? The world out there seems to have plenty to offer. And many have fallen into that trap. And the devil is attempting us to tempt Jesus, by, as, as he tempted Jesus, to give him the world if only he would be loyal to him. But we also must remember that the world's wealth doesn't compare to our riches that we have in Jesus Christ. We live as if we have died to the world once and for all and as we continue to live for Christ. You see, daily we, we remember our baptism. We are dead to sin. We rise with the fellow with, as we follow Jesus in a life to give witness to him. There was an African convert that once prayed, Oh Lord, you are the needle and I am the thread. You see, last, that day he had visited a school where uh, the girls were sewing, and he noticed the thread always followed the needle. And if he stayed close to the Lord, praying, studying his word, reading it, depending entirely on, uh, on him, he could always be led by God's Spirit. You see, counting the cost involved recognizing what Jesus undertook to secure our salvation. And we quickly then recognize that it is beyond any of us, you or me, of what we could ever hope to do to be right with God. And that is why you and I accept the redemption, even though it may cost us relationships, material possessions, and self-centered pride. And that is why we live to be his disciples. We have counted the cost. We have accepted the cost. And we live out that cost of discipleship to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us rise. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole needs of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For all disciples of Jesus Christ, both here at Ascension Lutheran Church and throughout the world, that we be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Let us pray to the Lord. For the fulfillment of the Great Commission that wherever the good news of salvation in Christ is proclaimed, hearts turn to the Lord and live. Let us pray to the Lord. For all servant leaders in the church and in the world, that their work for our, our blessing shows forth in the goodness of Christ to the world he died to save. Let us pray to the Lord. For the blessing of all who hunger and thirst, for all who are weary and heavy laden, and for all who are without house or income, that they seek the restoration the Lord's good hand provides. Let us pray to the Lord.
for all who willingly for all who willingly put themselves in the path of evil for the sake of other people's goods, including uh, military members, law enforcement officers, and emergency workers, that they be protected by the Lord's mighty hand. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who in heart, mind, and body, Norma, Jackie, Clara and Bob, Charles, James, Bill and Annabelle, Gloria, Harold, Hannah Grace, Dee and Bob, Carol, Jake, Karen, Nancy, Eleanor, Elsie, and Dawn and Doris, Florence, Loretta, Marilyn, Charlene, Bill and Lillian, Shannon, Marie, Stephen, Jan, Richard, Sam, Diane, Ace, Diane, and Bill. And we pray, dear Lord, that they be touched with your healing hand of the Savior and filled with the presence of, of his comforting spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Eternal Father, you have made the whole world stop spinning for a while. You silenced the noise that we have created. You made us bend our knees again and ask for a miracle. You closed your churches so that we would realize how dark our world is without you. You humbled the proud and the powerful. The economy is crashing, businesses are closing. We are very proud, we thought, that everything we have, everything we possess, was a result of our hard work. We have forgotten that it was always your grace and mercy that made us who we are. We're running in circles looking for some cure for, to this disease, when in fact we need to humble ourselves and ask you for guidance and wisdom. We have been living our lives like we have been here for earth for forever, like there's no heaven. Maybe these trials are your mercy in disguise. Maybe this, this virus is actually your way of purifying and cleansing us. Help us during this time to reflect on your love and mercy and that you, have, and that you are the supplier of all good things. Lead and guide us during this time to look to you for our strength and hope so that in due time this virus will be behind us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the church, you have called us to be your disciples. You have given us the church so that we may come to hear your word and to receive the sacrament, and so that with zeal and courage we may go out into the world to share the good news to those living in darkness. We ask that you continue to bless us as we carry out the mission of saving souls. Be with our staff, our church council, the call committee, and other organizations within our church. So that, they will be, so that your will will be done in our midst. Be with those who are given the responsibility of reviewing the call list for us, so that they may in due time come to an agreement as to who you want us to extend a call to, to lead us here at Ascension. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we are mindful for all those who are hurting because of the recent hurricanes that which came on the shores of Texas and Louisiana this past week. Be with those who lost their homes and belongings, those who were injured, as well as those who are mourning the loss of life. Continue to watch over them and grant your peace and hope, knowing that you are with them in their time of need. Move the hearts of people to help those in need, giving to them the things that will help them through this awful situation. Lord, in your mercy. For these and other concerns we have that coming before the throne of grace, we find mercy to help us in our time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us therefore come before the throne of grace with humble and sincere hearts, 
to lay our burdens down. Gracious Lord, we come before you laying the burden of our sin at the foot of your cross. We openly acknowledge our failure to follow your plans for our lives. We have stumbled and fallen in our service to you. We have placed our agenda at head of yours. We have been shallow in our love towards you and those you have placed in our path. We cry out for mercy, trusting in your promise to forgive us through the love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God has heard your cry for mercy and fulfills his promise to save and deliver you. Lavishing his grace upon you in Jesus, he, en he enables you to love and to forgive as he has first, and ha has first loved and forgiven you. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority and in his stead, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our world to trounce evil and the, its deception by his death upon the cross. With joyful hearts we receive the victory over death and the grave, which he secured for us by the rising from the tomb. Grant in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we ask you, O oh Lord, to forgive, to renew, and to strengthen us with your word and spirit. Give us faith to receive your Son, Jesus Christ, to take up our cross daily, and to overcome the evil of our world with the goodness of the one who died for us all. With, great, with gratitude in our hearts, we praise you, O oh Father, with, and with the Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Oh,
Now may the Savior's body and his blood strengthen and preserve you in the Christian faith into life everlasting. Depart in that peace. Amen. We pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this gracious gift of your son's body and blood. Now that we have received his goodness in his word and spirit, help us to take up our cross daily and follow our Savior, who leads us with the holy only love that overcomes evil with good. Through Jesus Christ, your, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, life without end. Amen. You may be seated for now. Uh, just This would be the time for our offerings, and we appreciate the, the gifts that those people 
that you have given and the, also those that are online. And uh, God has really has blessed us, and we thank God for that, and we thank you. And if you uh, uh, have, have your offering to give, you can do that as you, as you leave the church, or for those that are in the homes, you can send it to the office, and they, we will appreciate it. Also, uh, we have some announcements. First of all, we're still collecting the hand sanitizers and the face masks for Christian help. And there is a basket in the narthex for those items, and uh, all donations are uh, greatly appreciated. We're asking for donations uh, of uh, gift cards from Publix or all these are $25 for our manna distribution. Uh, we've been handing that out, as you know, uh, in lieu of, of the food gifts. And we thank those who have been taking part of that and, uh, and, and uh, in previous months. And if you want to take part this month, uh, the manna pantry will be open on Friday, September 18th. Uh, a small, Ascension has a small amount of scholarship money for students, grade one or undergraduate. Please see the weekly uh, email or contact the church office for more information. Uh, we have, as you know, slowly been reopening our campus to congregational events, and uh, this will be in a multi-phase approach depending on how this virus is, uh, is, is doing. And uh, so keep uh, uh, looking at the, at the uh, internet there or the, our website as to what is going on. And uh, we hopefully uh, that we can get this open eventually uh, full time. But if you have to contact, uh, want to know anything further, just contact Carla uh, directly and she'll answer your questions. Uh, also, as you know uh, from reading, that our call committee is busy looking at the names that were given by our district president, and that's quite a process and uh, quite uh, a uh, time-consuming. And of course, we all kind of, kind of get, I think, excited over what's going to happen, what's going to happen. But this is the time where we have to really pray to God on behalf of the call committee as they go through this and search out uh, uh, the uh, slate that. We will that they will propose to the to the uh, uh, council and to the voters as to uh, the pastors that we will vote on, but keep them in your prayers. And I'm sure you got a lot of questions, and uh, we're going to try to keep all of this uh, uh, information out so that you're you know what's going on. But again, pray for them because that's a very important thing that they're doing in that process. Now let's see. Okay, it's your turn, Nathan. <laughs> all right, it's awesome. Let's stand up. Let's all sing together in one voice. Who breaks the power? Sin and darkness. The love is mighty, so much stronger. The King of Glory. the whole earth with holy thunder leaves us prayerless in all who wonder the king of glory the king above all kings oh this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place should be my cross You lived in your life Then I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me The sun in glory, the king of glory, the king of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice. 
kisses Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory, the King above all kings Oh, this is amazing love This is unfailing love That you would take my place she would bear my cross. Yes, she did. You lay down your life, but I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. We sing. Sing another one. <laughs> it's great. I love it. Love it. Well, we want to close with this blessing, and we want to again thank you and also those people who are watching us today online for, for taking the time to be here with us and worshiping. So do not be overcome by evil. Go forth with the blessing of your good and gracious God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.